slips and slides all the way down the slope. Behind him was a cliff nearly 100 meters high. If he fell, he would have fallen to pieces. In a panic, he clasped his fingers to the sand. He almost pulled his fingernails off. Only then did he manage to stop his body. The pain in his hand was so intense. The pain was so intense that Roy shivered. Even his breathing became labored. But he didn't dare to relax. His whole body was pressed against the hill. He tried his best to keep his body steady. But the sand was too soft. It was too soft for Roy's body. It wasn't long before he began to slide further down. Roy waved his hands helplessly. But the bare sandy slope. There was nothing to hold on to. In the end he had to try and spread his legs. And using his face as a brake he managed to stop. That's when the phone in his bag suddenly rings. Roy was dumbfounded that his life was in danger. He couldn't even breathe. There was no way he could answer the phone. But the ringing was distracting. After much deliberation, Roy decided to answer it. After all, this could be his only chance of getting out of this mess. So he lifted his head cautiously, tentatively. He let go of his right hand and reached for his backpack. But just as Roy touched the phone, his right hand suddenly slipped. He slides uncontrollably down the cliff. He was on the verge of falling to pieces. He opened his hands with all his might, climbing up with both feet. He managed to hold on to the edge of the cliff. He miraculously managed to save his life. Seeing Roy alive, the waves lapped angrily against the rocks. A loud noise was made. Each stroke was a chilling experience, physical and mental torture. Roy's will was breaking. The waves seemed to have sensed this, and they beat harder on the rocks, shaking the sand off the cliffs, trying to break him to pieces. In the face of such a desperate situation, although Roy was desperate, but he didn't give up. He mumbled something under his breath, calculating the frequency of the waves. At the moment of the next wave, Roy's eyes snapped open. He let go of his hand. He jumped off the cliff a hundred meters high, falling on the waves. Roy didn't fall to his death, but the water was too shallow and he hit the rocks. After a short period of dizziness, Roy soon came to his senses, struggling to flail his arms and legs before he drowned, shouting. He rose to the surface. He was too happy to be back from the dead. Rolling and crawling to higher ground. Lying on the rocks. He breathed heavily. It took a few moments for a stunned Roy to recover. He sat up and found a large, bone-deep gash in his right hand. The white bones of his right hand were a sight to behold. But no matter how bad the wound was, he was alive after all. Roy cried for a while to calm down. He was ready to get out of here. But as soon as he took his left foot, he heard a crunching sound in his lower back. He lost feeling in both legs. Then he fell to the ground. Sometime later Roy was awakened by the waves. He sat up in a daze. He found that his right hand had been eroded by the sea. The pain was excruciating. But the next moment Roy realized with despair. Compared to the pain in his waist, his hand was only a minor injury. His hip bone had been shattered in the jump, except for his feet, which he could barely move. Both thighs were completely uncontrollable. It was then that Roy finally remembered. He still had a mobile phone. He hurriedly removed his bag and unzipped it with his teeth, only to find the phone was soaked in water and completely ruined. In desperation, Roy began to scream for help. His hoarse voice echoed across the beach, but the only sound in this place was the waves. Except for people like him, normally no one would even come near. He had to give up after half a dozen shouts. He struggled to take off his t-shirt. He simply bandaged the wound on his hand. Then he looked around to find his way out. But to his left was a rocky reef. To his right were towering cliffs. The only other beach was on a small island in the distance. Swimming across it might offer a chance of survival. So Roy takes a deep breath, with his bag on his back. He crawls into the water with his left hand. At first he swam well out of the reef, without fear of breaking his bones. But soon Roy pays the price for his recklessness. Swimming one-handed overwhelmed his already tired body. He lost his breath just as he swam into the deep water. In the blink of an eye, he sank into the water. Underwater. Roy opened his mouth helplessly to call for help, but a series of bubbles emerge. He throws his hands up in the air to call for help, but then he realizes, only he can save himself. So like a madman. Roy, paddling with his left hand as hard as he could, he finally made it to the surface before he choked to death, and got some life-saving air. However, what awaited him was a tidal wave of dizziness. In a trance, Roy thought of giving up. Still his body sank into the water, like an insignificant piece of gravel, falling silently to the bottom of the sea, not realizing that the merciless sea seemed unwilling to let Roy go. It wasn't long before the rising tide washed him back to shore. Roy had just opened his eyes. He found himself swept along by the waves, towards the rocks on the shore. At that moment, instinctive desire to survive again prevailed. He threw out his pack, letting one strap hang from the reef. He then wrapped the other around his arm. He was lucky to escape with his body securely fastened.